And so melatonin has a huge plethora of effects. But when you Google, you know, when you put in uh, melatonin and mercury, you find out that it basically undoes the lethal effects of mercury instantly. When you Google uh, aluminum and melatonin, same thing. Um, glyphosate and aluminum, uh, so glyphosate and, and uh, melatonin. So melatonin has uh, a really like a huge range of spectra of things that it does. It's a main antioxidant in the brain and if you want to protect the brain and then all of us injected the hell out of people and we saw very little progress in our Alzheimer's patients and the sick patients and then the literature started emerging a far more important detox agent and anti-inflammatory for the intracellular component of uh, our cells in the body uh, was melatonin and the melatonin on its own has strong antiviral effects, antimicrobials are used for sepsis, you know one of the most deadly human conditions is sepsis and it beautifully stops that. With COVID-19 I advise several uh, physicians that run emergency departments in large hospitals, you know, in Saudi Arabia and Australia and other places. And people that followed my advice, they had virtually a zero death rate by including melatonin against the so-called cytokine storm that nobody really knows if that really exists or not. But the dive that, that COVID patients took at least initially when the virus was more aggressive. Now first to Dr. Klinghart. He is a doctor and he has his clinic in Seattle. He has received the following awards. In 2007 and 2009 he was awarded Physician of the Year by the Global Foundation of Integrative Medicine. In 2010 he was awarded the Physician's Excellence Award for the treatment of Lyme-induced autism. In 2013 Lifetime Achievement Award in Los Angeles. He was elected twice as best practitioner, one was worldwide, the other was in USA. Dr. Klinghart lectures at the Universities of Illinois, Utah, Washington DC, Freiburg in Germany and Adelaide, as well as the medical faculties of Geneva and Zurich. He educates doctors and physicians, who then can use in their name and title, educated after Dr. Klinghart. Dr. Klinghart studied medicine and psychology in Germany, completing his PhD on the involvement of the autonomic nervous system in autoimmune disorders. Early in his career, he became interested in the health consequences of chronic toxicity. He has contributed significantly to the understanding of metal toxicity and its connection with chronic infections, illness, and pain. He's been instrumental in advancing various fields within the biological medicine world. And if I read everything that this man has accomplished, I would take up all of his time. Um, what you're after with melatonin is a more sustained effect. You know, when you take it orally, most of the effect is like within half an hour or an hour and you get a high peak and, and good effect, but then it kind of goes down. Also, what people don't know is that uh, 200, uh, you know, we all know about the melatonin being produced in the pineal gland. Well, every cell in the body is producing small amounts of melatonin. We put always on 200 milligrams of melatonin. And then uh, friends of mine in Germany were experimenting with uh, transdermal melatonin. Um, to get other additional effects like with breast cancer if you put the cream around the breast or thyroid cancer you can get amazing positive effects on that and then we started also experimenting with suppositories um, what you're after with melatonin is a more sustained effect you know, when you take it orally most of the effect is like within half an hour or an hour melatonin has uh, really like a huge range of spectra of things that it does and one of the things that has emerged and I used that for like almost 30 years after meeting Professor Ryder, uh, people with active cancers, we put always on 200 milligrams of melatonin. If you have depression or anxiety or some sort of illness, it's either you know you caught a bacteria or you have neurotransmitter imbalance. What, what do you feel if you had to take a big step back and see it all? Do you think it's a matter of light versus dark? What, what, what's the, the biggest scope you can say that's happening on the world? Well, uh, of course, you know, that's, um, I, I could give many answers 
uh, uh, to that, but I think um, light versus dark um, is the shortest way of expressing it. You know, I, I in, in different lectures that I give, you know, so I make it very clear, we don't have to go into the details. In uh, Rudolf Steiner, you know, the, the Austrian uh, mystic that was very active in the early part of the last century, the, the founder of Waldorf schools and biodynamic farming and, and a, a completely new kind of alternative medicine. He um, predicted, you know, that uh, towards the end of last century, in the beginning of the century, there will be a movement driven by big corporations to take the soul away from people, to disconnect people from the higher world. And in order to do that, we have to um, destroy the pineal gland in people. And I followed the research on that and amazingly what we found, uh, the pineal gland is the most sensitive part of our central nervous system and is highly, highly, highly sensitive to four things. Aluminum, <laughs> glyphosate, fluoride and Wi-Fi. And we are the only country in the world that has pushed these four things in the last 60 years or so on everybody growing up here. And so what I feel, what I observe, and what we're also testing on our ART system is that people have calci severely calcified uh, pineal glands. And uh, I, I show the anatomy in some of my courses, you know, it's very clear that the pineal gland is a receiver for higher fields of energy and translates them into thought and into actually controlling our uh, immune system, our endocrine system, and, and so on and so forth. There's all science. You know. we, it's become the new norm. And so um, it, it is astounding that the telecommunications industry has selected the frequencies out of the huge spectrum of frequencies that are absolutely destructive to ourselves and especially to the pineal gland. You know, they couldn't have made any better choices than 2.4 gigahertz. Um, that the end point that when you have inhaled aluminum, as we do from the geoengineering program, and uh, have glyphosate in the food chain, that glyphosate and aluminum combine in the blood and in the, in the gut and in the bloodstream to form six different uh, chemical compounds uh, that where aluminum and glyphosate are hooked up together. And the end point of that compound is the pineal gland, published, you know, it's not my idea. And uh, what is needed for this compound to actually enter the brain is to open up the blood-brain barrier. And the current frequencies in the Wi-Fi world are exactly doing that. They open the blood-brain barrier, so toxins that used to stay in the bloodstream and in the body below the neck are now entering the brain very freely. That, that applies to all toxins. Um, and so it's a new time in that way. You know? And, so, and um, when you think this through, um, you come to the conclusion that either there must, be, there must have been an ultra intelligence group of scientists who have designed this protocol to fluoridate the drinking water to put nanonized aluminum in the air, to put glyphosate in the food, and then activate it, spark it with the right frequencies. It almost, I could, it took me 20 years to figure out the perfect storm that is created there. And it's either a coincidence, which is possible, that enough dumb people made the wrong choices, you know, along the years. I'm still hoping that that may be at least part, partially true or it's orchestrated by a very, very intelligent group of destructive minds. Or what I also believe is very possible that there's some higher fields of consciousness that can be both tuned into the light and to life affirmative action and can be absolutely destructive, like phenomena like Adolf Hitler and others, people that come under the influence of something absolutely dark and destructive. And I do believe it's very possible that enough scientists and politicians have come under the influence of those higher fields and are acting according 
to it actually not knowing on a human level why they're doing what they're doing and what they're doing you know that the now we you know we, a good example is 5g you know sort of um to put it on post you know along the streets okay that's one issue but putting it on satellite and actually the government approving to put it on satellite I mean blasting the whole planet with a frequency that has never been checked for safety for its influence on the insects on the songbirds on the has never been checked for anything and to approve that is unconceivable to like somebody who still got a little bit of a brain left and uh, that uh, politicians in the white house and other countries are conspiring or with that um can only be explained that their brains have come under the influence of some larger higher field uh they cannot be human in nature you know because the, the human nature is always life affirmative and loving and wanting to wanting to live and make the biosphere more friendly to life and so so there is some scary thoughts about that you know but i'm still hoping i'm still putting my weight on let's hope it's just a coincidence and enough dumb people made enough dumb decisions and and um, if enough of us wake up and point it out to them that there can be a reversal you know the wifi can be switched off in a second <laughs> we'd be done with that and you know love is it could be forbidden you know tomorrow it's in a water table for many years but there could be an end uh, to it you know the chemtrail program could be stopped like that you know so the the good thing is that um solutions positive solutions that are suppressed right now that are everywhere could be the norm of tomorrow within 24 hours we could turn the planet from um a creature that is threatened on all levels to paradise you know virtually within 24 hours you know we're still close enough to that most of you certainly have heard this for the first time it is such a useful summary by dr klinghart on where we stand in this world and how the dots are connected we really highly appreciate his so important insights and that he shares that with us hopefully you can share this video too with your friends and family members so they too can understand that your fast beloved wifi is indeed a trojan horse for your cells you will not be able to stop it outside but you can stop it inside your home yeah but you might say but your neighbor has also wifi the closer it is the more harmful with each meter further away it loses its power stay with us a little longer to find out whether there is an antidote but what it does is phenomenal well, those of you know a little bit of biochemistry the 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 worst thing that happens in inflammation in neurological illness is the creation of peroxynitrite you know the electro smog marty paul wrote this beautiful paper that shows the the wifi exposure triggers an influx of calcium into your brain cells and calcium triggers an inflammatory process in the cells that creates ultimately at the end point a substance called peroxynitrite which completely destroys the cell and melatonin is the antidote for peroxynitrite so there is a german researcher who heals pretty much any neurological disease just with one tool and that is melatonin but this is not 2 or 3 mg this is 1000 2000 3000 up to 6000 mg the ALS we give 6000 uh with most the common the children get 80 mg that's a working dose most adults need a lasting dose of about 300 it's the anti-aging tool for the older folks here i, I notice a few of you are over 60 which i'm always happy i'm still one of the oldest here in the room i think so i can you know and compared to the other speakers i look a lot wiser because i lost my hair you know <laughs> it's completely misunderstood and underrated melatonin is the principal antioxidant used in the brain and in the central nervous system it is not glutathione yeah it's not all the antioxidants that people talk about it is melatonin and melatonin is produced in every cell in the body but in the brain the predominant place is the pineal gland 
but our whole gut microbiome when it's healthy produces about 400 to 4,000 times more uh, melatonin than the brain does, but it does it at noon time. And so the transdominal melatonin is given between dinner and bedtime, an hour or two before sleep time, it does hardly increase, change your sleep. Most people don't feel any change initially, um, but not two or three milligrams, you know. But if you give 200 or 300, you stop any neurological disease. That's a phenomenal, phenomenal tool. So um, this is just, um, you, you can combine it. Uh, yeah, so there is an article on melatonin and retroviral infection. Um, they like to combine it with DHEA. You know, it's also easy to get here. Um, it's a phenomenal, simple treatment. It's fantastic. Uh, you know, I can take you through some of the, the studies, you know, but uh, um, I, I highlight it here. So one is an anti-infectious agent, and so we use it for, for Lyme disease. Um, it uh, induces autophagy. That means that dead cells are eaten up in the body without having to fast, which I hate fasting. Um, it's fantastic for gum, chronic gum disease. Um, and here's the article on the melatonin delivery using transdermal ways of doing that. So doing that, um, uh, then here melatonin as an antioxidant under promises but over delivers. It is much more effective than any other antioxidant. And then it's a fantastic antiviral as a um, anti-aging tool you know, to keep your brain fresh and intact. And then. Um, People, we have a lot of problems with people getting pregnant. Uh, not in my office, like everybody else. <laughs> Every month, somebody else who gets pregnant because they know my tricks. But um, here's a beautiful one, the, the role of melatonin on production and preservation of gametes and embryos. It's a fantastic thing to um, get pregnant and stay pregnant. Um, and then for the viral infections. And so what I left out here, well, the last one is interesting, a friend of our, I was uh, Steve Fry, who was a lab in Arizona. Um, he's the only uh, physician and lab technician in the world who uses actually a microscope and then does whatever he sees under the microscope, uses a DNA probe to see what it is actually that he sees. And he founds, found over the last 10 years a huge increase in the strange phenomenon that we have uh, all have a lawn basically covering every blood vessel on the inside and outside and every nerve sheet of uh, fungi and plankton, plant material that grows. And this surface that's covered with this lawn of candida and other fungi and plants, algae and, and plankton is over two square miles in us. It's not a small surface. Yeah, and so and that he found is a direct correlation between the extent of that and chronic illness, the severity of chronic illness. And the only tool ever found to break that is not the antifungals, it's not the, it's melatonin. For watching.